Over the years, the Pokemon Company has released some pretty interesting products and merchandise. Some of these products range from different pencils to t-shirts to a Meryl Halloween costume for grown adults. Personally, I really like collecting vintage or just different old Pokemon merchandise ranging from the late 90s to the early or mid 2000s. Growing up, I didn't really have too many random Pokemon products besides like... Pokemon cards, I guess. I'm pretty sure that was like the only thing I grew up with. And then obviously the games. I had the, the games on the DS and everything. Now, as a fully grown adult, I really enjoy collecting these things. I think they're really cool. And I think there's something extremely fascinating behind how Pokemon would market themselves back in the day, you know, late 90s or early to mid 2000s. Today, Pokemon is literally the biggest franchise on the entire planet. So you know that they're just rolling in money they probably have tons of different teams and companies working for them to just make different unique items because as you all know that there are still thousands of unique Pokemon products in the stores like Target or Walmart which I'm not going to really get into too much this video this video mainly just wanted to specialize in like 90s and early 2000s products that are unique and quirky the 90s are notorious for unique and strange products which is really cool honestly I feel like the 90s just had a special way of marketing different toys or promotional items and you know back then there were no online marketplaces there were was no youtube to like watch reviews and stuff you pretty much saw an advertisement or a commercial about a product or you know you could have seen it in stores as well pokemon are burning with flame power their whirlwind power blows them away oh, no! there's nowhere to hide yikes can they be mastered so packaging for the product back then, advertisements and commercials, they really had to tell a story to sell the item to the consumer. And of course, Pokemon was no exception. I think the early Pokemon stuff is just the coolest and extremely unique. One of the first items that I thought about when writing the script for this video was the Pocket Pikachu. So in the late 90s, virtual pets were all the rage. They exploded in the markets. Tamagotchi, which I'm, I'm sure all of you guys have heard of Tamagotchi, they were just so popular different types of like random pet products even like furbies which were a little bit bigger but still kind of like a virtual pet in a way stuff like that were just super super popular back in the day so with that being said pokemon had to jump on that bandwagon and they released the pocket pikachu which was a tamagotchi essentially but with a pikachu theme They released it in 1998 and it was available in Japan, North America, and Europe for roughly 20-ish dollars, which, you know, kind of a steal. Well, $20 back in the 90s actually was kind of a lot of money, so maybe that, that was a little expensive. But anyways, it functioned pretty much just like a Tamagotchi, where you feed the Pikachu, you have to walk it, play with it, whatever. It could also be used as a pedometer, which if you don't know what that is, it basically is a thing that tracks your steps. And something I didn't actually know before writing the script for this video was that they released a second one that was called the pocket pikachu 2 with a silver casing or casting around it rather than the yellow one and the second one actually interacted with pokemon gold silver and crystal where you were able to trade points from the pocket pikachu that you earned by walking you know doing more steps and everything you could trade those points in game for items which is kind of a crazy idea and i feel like that may be where they got the idea for the pokewalker that released alongside heart gold and soul silver in 2009 i play pokemon heart gold version i play pokemon soul silver version i collect pokemon trade them and engage in heated battle mostly he loses like now like now or my brother i use mine when i run to earn lots i just took 5,000 steps what about you hey me too Pokemon Heart Gold and Pokemon Soul Silver version games with the Pokewalker accessory only for Nintendo DS systems. Rated Which functions similarly with like the walking aspect, except the Pokewalker didn't have like the digital screen for, you know, having like a digital pet. Because virtual pets weren't really popular in the 2009. I mean, Nintendogs was huge, but other than Nintendogs, there were no really like other random virtual pet products out there. So the next item I think is extremely cool, and I want to buy some of these right now. These are 
Pokemon finger skateboards, basically like a tech deck. As you all know, tech decks have always been pretty popular. So tech decks, which were just like the coolest 2000s toy ever, and I've low-key been getting back into tech decks recently, they're made so much better than they used to be, it's insane. So if you ever had them as a kid and you want them again, go get some. They're like $3 at the store. Anyways, move on from tech decks. So basically, tech deck is a mini finger skateboard, which were popular in the 90s, and they, you know, still are popular today. But anyways, Pokemon, of course taking advantage of this they had the smartest teams back then to make a product about like anything you could ever think about so back in the 90s a brand called x concepts um and pokemon made a set of 68 different mini finger skateboards with different pokemon and these pretty much acted exactly like a tech deck in the sense that you could remove like the wheels and the trucks and you could kind of customize it how you want but I just think these are so cool and the packaging is just so amazing in my opinion. I want some of these right now. Obviously, they're pretty expensive. Most vintage, you know, 90s, early 2000s Pokemon merchandise or products are pretty expensive because of how cool it is. And because, you know, Pokemon is huge. And the original stuff, people didn't really buy to collect necessarily. Like, people bought products just to use the product back in the day. So it's kind of cool to have a sealed vintage product in today's realm where everyone collects things today like everyone buys things intentionally to to keep it sealed and to collect which i know some people did in the 90s for sure but the odds of the average person doing that is extremely low so that's why like these sealed products are so expensive i would love to have a full set of these on the wall i think that would look so awesome having these all just like lined up on your wall like above your computer or something if you ever had these as a kid please leave a comment down below i think these this might be my favorite product of Pokemon. So the next item is something that I could see a lot of kids just loving when they got these. These are Pokemon sliders. So it's literally a little Pokemon figure. Like, I don't know if you know the Jax Pacifics brand, but they make little figures. These are basically just tiny little Pokemon figures, but at the bottom there is a little wheel attached to them that could roll around. I think these are really cool. And I think the function of it was to kind of have a battle like where you get two or three or even have like a bunch of friends release them at the same time and they kind of they run into each other and whoever is like in the circle or standing wins the wins the pokemon battle essentially i think that these are super cool and these also look really cool to display i feel like that's another huge thing about vintage pokemon products is that they're all super cool to display actually any pokemon product to be honest but more specifically, it's just cooler to have the older stuff, you know what I mean? Because there's just a there's a less amount of them, and they're never going to make them quite like they used to. Like, they could always remake these Pokemon sliders, but they're never going to actually be like how they used to. Going on with some more just like random home Pokemon toys is Pokemon Bouncy Ball. So they made a series or a set of different Pokemon Bouncy Balls where it's just a Bouncy Ball, but there was a Pokemon inside of them. I feel like this was perfect for the late 90s and early 2000s like if you grew up then i feel like you definitely had just a bunch of random bouncy balls and especially clear ones that had like flakes or just something in them and this is super unique it's kind of like a pokeball in a way where you know the pokemon is in the ball so i think that's pretty cool a lot of people are like well why would you want this because they're they look like they're trapped but it looks cool i i don't know i would have loved this if i was a kid You've definitely all heard about the Pokemon trading card game, but there actually used to be a coin game, a battling coin game with little coins. And I actually have the like booklet of this or like whatever you would you would buy at the store to get three coins because every pack came with three coins. I actually found the little pack at a thrift store. No coins, unfortunately. I wish I found the coins, but this is pretty cool. And I feel like a lot of people actually don't know that there was a coin game. So it was in the late 90s, of course, it was released by Hasbro and they were little brass coins and i believe that there it was just generation one I, I don't think they did generation two they may have done generation two if i'm if you know leave a comment down below something that's cool about this though is that something kind of cool about this though is that there's not a confirmation about a mew coin being out there there may be a mew coin out there and if there is it's extremely rare as of right now i'm unable to find anyone that has or has seen a mew battle coin game from the late 90s i think that would be crazy if there is a mew maybe they made like a select few of them 
but I won't get into the details about how you actually play this game. If you want to look it up, just look it up. But I just think this is super unique, and this would be super cool to collect. Modern day, or the last, like, long time, actually, Pokemon has actually released, like, little plastic coins that come in random Pokemon card packs that you buy at the store, which are fun to collect. I don't actually know if you could play a game with those. I don't think you can. I think that those are just purely collectible, but these had a purpose, and there was a game behind it, which I just think is super cool and kind of obscure. This next product is something I actually always wanted as a kid. They definitely had a different version though because this one came out before I was born. I was born in the early 2000s, so this was released in the late 90s, but I'm pretty sure there was another one of these in the middle of the 2000s. But this is a Pokédex that is an interactive Pokédex, and once, once again, history is repeating itself. I'm editing this video right now, and this guy's freaking arm is jacked. How do you even get a muscle on this part of your arm? I don't think I've ever seen a muscle that has grown on another muscle on somebody's arm in this way. This is insane. Mew is not in this because apparently Mew actually wasn't revealed at the time this Pokedex was released to the public, which is kind of crazy. Like Mew must have genuinely been such like a huge concept or idea or myth legend back in the day like nowadays it's like we we expect to get a mythical pokemon like if there's not one announced we expect it like and when it is revealed it's not really a huge surprise it's cool to see what the new mythicals are but it's not really like a surprise because we know what's going to happen but back in the day before mew was even like announced basically like people even knew about mew it was crazy, like, it was a legend, like, people thought Mew was under, like, a truck or something in Generation 1. It was a whole thing, and I think it's just fascinating, and it's, it's kind of cool how history has changed like that to where it's not so cool now to get a new mythical, but back in the day, it was like, oh my gosh. So basically, this Pokedex was, had, like, a little number pad and alphabetical keyboard so that the user can input different words and numbers. It's pretty cool, and I think it actually speaks to you as well. Like, I, th I think that there's a speaker on it. I may be wrong on that. That may be a different one I'm thinking about, but I'm pretty sure it talks to you. So this next one is kind of unique. This is an interactive Pokédex with, like, little cards. I actually can't find much information about this, but it kind of looks like a Game Boy in a way. And I think that this is actually newer. I don't think that this is super old. I can't, like I said, I can't really find much information about this for some reason. But basically it looks like you kind of like you put in a card into this little pokedex looking thing and it kind of just reveals to you what the pokemon is and gives you the stats and everything behind the pokemon back in the 90s pikachu looked completely different that's where the nickname chunkachu comes from if you've never heard the word chunkachu it ba it's basically referring to how pikachu used to look chunky back in the day pikachu was pretty thick so here's a picture of a modern day pikachu plush compared to a vintage 90s pokemon pikachu plush and plush in general have always been huge for pokemon like that i swear that has got to be one of the biggest products that they sell i personally have a small collection of pokemon plush i have i know people that love to collect pokemon plush i think the pokemon plush are like the cool one of the coolest products because it's kind of like you're having a pokemon in your house you know what i'm saying i know that sounds nerdy for me to say but it's true because they're super cool, and I think they're well made, and the ones from the 90s just have like a, a cool look to them. Like, they just have that 90s look to them. I just thought this was hilarious, though, because Pikachu really has had a whole different makeover since he was created. Like, he was wide, and then they eventually changed him. I'm not sure exactly when they kind of slimmed him down. I think more so around like the DS era of Pokemon, maybe, or maybe like Generation 3, probably. I'm not exactly sure on that. So next up, I want to talk about vintage Pokemon t-shirts. Now, there are a ton of vintage Pokemon t-shirts. Like, there are video game promo ones, like this really cool Pokemon Stadium one. This one's awesome. And the difference between, like, a vintage and modern-day shirt is that the vintage shirts retain their value. They're more unique. They're better material, better quality. They're cooler looking. Because I know that at, at the first time hearing it, like, you think it's just a t-shirt. Who cares if it's old or not? But there are a lot of differences between them. And... There, like I said, there are just tons of vintage Pokemon t-shirts from the 90s, early 2000s, and they are pretty expensive for some of them. Like, some of them can go for $100, some of them can go for, like, $20, $30. But the thing is, most of them are youth sizes, obviously, because many adults back in the day weren't wearing Pokemon t-shirts. So that's why adult size Pokemon t-shirts are worth a lot more than the youth size. I have one Pokemon t-shirt from 99, I think. I think it's 1999, and it's a Pikachu one. It's super cool. But anyways, like, there are just so many unique ones. There are different promos. Like, there's a trading card game t-shirt. 
there are like different staff t-shirts and I just think these are super cool and there are some of them that are just so rare. The most rare ones I, th I believe would be like the staff ones or ones from like the Pokemon um, like 2000s like announcements and everything. Those are just super cool and I really want a collection of vintage Pokemon t-shirts. You don't come across them often like in thrift stores or resale shops. There are obviously a lot online. There are a lot of anything online because anyone can sell there so that's why online marketplaces are great. Like the Pokemon Center ones from the 2000s are probably the most valuable ones. They are just super cool. They have super cool graphics. They have the year on them and they're just super unique and they're extremely hard to come by. But there are a lot to learn about vintage t-shirts and I just, I really think that these vintage Pokemon shirts are something special, especially like the promo ones for the games or the trading card or the Pokemon Center ones specifically. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is the first video I've ever made kind of like this. If you don't really know who I am, I basically make kind of like concept Pokemon videos or Pokemon news or leak rumor stuff, which I kind of want to start getting out of. I kind of want to grow my content to something more, more unique and better. So I kind of want to try to do more videos like this. And I may do one video a week, maybe two videos a week. I usually do about two to three a week in general, but I want to just put more effort into my videos. I want to make them more informational and just more exciting when people are watching them. And I want people to feel more excited when they see a new video from this channel. And if you guys want to see more content like this and you have any like suggestions, please leave a comment. I love to hear what you guys have to say and I love interacting with you guys. And let me know if you made it to this far in the video. I really am just curious. I'm just testing stuff out, testing the waters with different type of videos that tell more of a story rather than just saying some rumors and leaks that I see online and stuff. I just, I kind of just want to grow this channel and evolve it into something, something a little better in my opinion, but I hope you guys enjoyed. So please make sure to leave a like and please feel free to make any suggestions in the comments of how I could like make this video better by like better edits or what I should talk about or how I should talk this and that, you know what I mean? Just any any feedback, any feedback is much appreciated. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe.